Well, you guys are going to release me and stop wasting my time, or I'm going to charge you for my time. Yep, you tried that once already. It didn't work so well, did it? Oh, you think I tried that? Yes, because I know who you are. Oh, okay. How the fuck does someone fit back here, really? Not very good. Welcome back to the Van Valian channel guys. Today we head to Flandrau, South Dakota for a video where police get dispatched to an accident. But this isn't just any accident, this is a minor accident involving a sovereign citizen. So of course it turns into a circus with lots of word salad, threats to the police officers which backfire spectacularly. And because he refuses to identify to the police and the alleged victim for insurance purposes, he gets a pair of silver bracelets and a ride to jail. Crime I committed. Because you were involved in an accident. I'm not saying you committed a crime right now. But because you're... Why are you shaking, man? Are you alright? Are you nervous? No. You're shaking. That makes me kind of nervous, man. You're over there with all these guns and shit all suited up, and you're the one shaking. Are you alright, man? You see what's going on here? You see him shaking? Yep. Are you alright? Do, do you need medical attention? No, I'm good. What I want right now is for you to identify yourself. That's what you want, that's nice. If you want anything you want, you ain't gonna get it. Is that what you said to the owner of the building you hit, I wonder? Hence why the police had to be called over what is essentially just a minor bump. And yes, this officer shaking is unusual, but it's not unheard of, especially when dealing with sovereign citizens because of how dangerous they can be. But his partner doesn't seem to be concerned, so you shouldn't be either. Plus, he does a great job with the arrest later anyway. Okay, I made a deal with that man right there. Put your hands up on the car. I, I, I said, hey, maybe. Put your maybe hands up on the it. car. Okay. And I worked out with him that I will cover the damages. That okay. has nothing to do That's with you. Right. Nothing to I do still with have you. To do, a report. do you report? That's lovely. Now, why would the owner of the building you allegedly hit with your truck need to call the police if you'd already worked this out with him? That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Fortunately, because this is body cam footage, we get the other side of the story, which, surprise, surprise, doesn't line up or paint him or his passenger in a very good light. Okay, hands up. At this point, I wish to remain secure in my person's papers and effects. Sir, I will charge you with assault and kidnapping. I'm not resisting. Why are you both up on me? He's not on you. He's holding your arm. I do not wish for this to happen, gentlemen. You were given a lawful order. No, that's not an order. I do not wish for this to happen, gentlemen. Well, no shit. I don't think anybody wishes to be placed in handcuffs. That's kind of the point of an arrested genius. My wrist is backwards. Come on, man. It's not backwards. It's, it's on the right. It's not backwards. Come on. It's supposed to be like this, so you can't. So I'm supposed to be like this and like break my wrist? Come on. It's not man. broke. No, but you're going to go try and sit me down in the back of your car like that. You want me to break my wrist when it's I sit down? It's not going to break on. when you sit down. Handcuffs are not built for comfort, so. You know, if you don't like how they feel, then maybe it's not a good idea to refuse to identify after allegedly fleeing the scene of an accident. Just saying. Look at this. Am I even resisting? Is there a need for this? Or is it just so that you guys can feel better about yourself? 
Oh yeah, real good pump this off. Yeah, you do, huh? You know, there's real crime in this city. There's like murder. There is, rapids. like failing to identify yourself yeah, when you're involved in an accident. Failure to identify as a crime. I want to see the charge for that. What charge is that? What law did I break by failure to identify? Let me see. Is South Dakota a stop and ID state? Not Gentlemen. stopping an ID, you're involved in an accident. Whoa, 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 show me, show me what law you're saying I'm breaking. You're over here throwing me in a car. South Dakota Codified Laws 32-34-6 Any driver of any vehicle involved in an accident resulting in damage to property shall stop his vehicle at the scene of the accident and immediately give his name and address and the name and address of the owner of the vehicle. You clearly didn't do this. Any knives on him beside this one? I have all kinds of stuff on my pockets that you are not free to touch, sir. That is my property. Exactly, and you're under arrest. Any other knives? I'm sure I got plenty on me. Two later. Two later, four. Alright, have a seat. What are you doing with my property? Your property's in the front seat right next to where you're going to be. Well, it might behoove you to know that there's another small knife in my right pocket. And I really know you were not allowed to reach into my pocket. I'll take the cuffs off and I'll get it my fucking self. It's in your front pocket. You can't reach it anyway. Get in. Do not fucking touch me. Oh, you can't just take the cuffs off, though, huh? I'd rather not. I don't care what you rather do. Get in the car. What is your name? Sergeant Neunfeld. Neunfeld and Weber. What is your first name? Rob. Rob Get Neunfeld in. and what Weber? Zach. Zach Weber. Inside no, thank car. you. This is against my will. How the fuck does someone fit back here, really? Not very good. Okay, that retort and door slam in response to this guy's whining was gold and deserves the replay. How the fuck does someone fit back here, really? Not very good. I mean, what did he expect? Leather recliners and a movie? Unbelievable. Anyway, now they speak to the alleged victim to get his side of the story. So what happened? So... Hassan used to cook at uh, Fajitas, big native guy. His mom knocked on the door, came in, and was like, what's going on? She said, somebody just hit your building and then drove away. I was like, well, did you see where they went? Yeah, they backed in right over by the um, whatever deal, the restaurant. I was like, okay. So she sent me, I sent the store already. She sends me, I said, do you have a picture of it? She goes, yeah. So she sends me that from the apartment they live in. Okay. So I walk over there and I'm looking around the truck and she's walking back up. She said, if I need to test it, I'll test it. What's right, right, what's wrong, what's wrong. I was like, okay. Um, and she goes, oh, I was looking for the license plate. She goes, oh, they're on the dash. So I took a picture of the license plate on the dash. So there's no plates anywhere else on the truck. And as I was sitting there, the lady in the white car, she said, can I help you? I'm like, is this yours? Or do you know whose this is? It's my husband's. Why? So he hit my building. I said, it's not a big deal. He just hit it. Just want to figure out what's going on. Well, well, let me back up. Right away she said, we didn't, he didn't do that. He's been here forever. When did it happen? I said, oh, 10, 15 minutes ago. She just came in my office. He's been here for a long time. That truck hasn't moved. So I called Weber and said, hey, somebody hit my vehicle or my office. They're claiming it didn't happen. It's easier to just get a police report out. Because if I turn it into insurance, they're going to want one anyway. Mm -hmm. So after hearing that and knowing how this video ends, I think he made the right decision to call the police. Like he said, for insurance purposes, but especially because his wife is denying it. But to be fair, he isn't denying it and they were negotiating the repair. But he was being vague about his details and the thing started to go downhill when he learned the police had been called. So, yeah, he definitely did the right thing by calling the police. So he comes out 
right away, yeah, sorry if I did it. I don't know if I did or didn't, but if I did it, I'll, I'll just fix it, take care of it. I'm like, oh, I have Dan Hahn. I just put it on a year ago. I'll have him come back over and figure out what it's going to take to patch it. It's not going to be horrible. There's a reason we put that break in there for reasons like this. If we can't, we got to cut it all out, it blends better. Well, uh, he was like, yep, no problem, whatever. And I said, hey, all that's Zach. They said, he just called the cops. They said, turn into insurance. I need a police report. Yeah, and then he took over. He got blood drawn right away. So you didn't make no deal with him that he's going to pay for it? I said, I now. would have Han come look at it, and we can figure out, because I gave him my number. Okay. I said, we can figure out what it's going to take to fix it. I said, but I don't know. He goes, I'll fix it. Man, I'm going to have Dan fix it. I said, if you're going to fix it, we're, you're going to pay to fix it, we're good, but I don't. And then you pulled in, and then he got blood drawn. So he didn't identify himself to you yet either? Well, he said his first name, but I didn't catch it. He kind of moved through it. But that's his wife. She identified herself to me as his wife. She said, that's my husband's pickup. He said he just got it. He didn't deny doing it. He said, I just got this, and it's a big old truck I'm not used to driving. I'm light of. I'm like, well, I have a picture of you against it. Uh, Hussain, what's the old cook from Fajitas, Buckley's tall native guy? Big dude. Oh, uh, you know who I'm talking. It's not Hussain. Hus Hazen. Hazen. Oh, Hazen Kevin. His mom came over. She's the one who took the picture and saw it. She was, I was outside having a cigarette. I saw the whole thing. Oh. So. So that's his wife that's in the. That's what she told me. That's my husband's truck. One that's in the driver's seat of the white car. Yeah, she said that's my husband's truck. Because she yeah. went inside to get it. Yeah. That's what she told me. He said his first name, but it, it mumbled through it. Oh. I can understand him not wanting to identify himself to the cops because he's a sovereign citizen and they think they're above the law, but not wanting to give his name to this guy is very suspicious. Unless, of course, you're driving around without insurance and your registration expired in 2022. Then this all makes complete sense. I don't know if you have that. Would it be under the plates that are on the windshield? I don't know. I can check here right massively expired. Well, if he just bought it, they might not even be to him. Well, maybe not. Because I was walking around trying to get a plate, so at least I had a picture in case it left. She's the one that told me in her to Julian Standing or something. Oh. Um, she's the one that told me there's no way he did it. That truck's been parked here for a long time. So. Well, she just told me it hit it. Yeah. Well, and she's like, I don't want to create problems, but if she was right's right, wrong's wrong, if I need to testify, I'll testify. Watch the whole thing. I was outside having a smoke. Yeah. So he hit it and then. Backed over there and went in the restaurant. He's claiming he didn't know if he hit it or not. I didn't think he hit it, is what he told me. Okay. So. He got real nervous when your pickup pulled up. I guess this is a still image from the surveillance video at the point where he backed into the building, but it's difficult to tell. But then again, he doesn't seem to be denying it at this point. The question is, did he leave the scene of an accident and does he have insurance? Anyway, now they go take pictures of the damage to his truck and question him further. So, I said, I called him. I said, I didn't know if I could figure out whose truck it was or even if it was here at the time. So, yeah. I figured just in case for insurance purposes, I needed a report.
how would you look at that? Damage you would expect to see and definitely feel if you backed your truck into a building. Frank said you have you drop something? Yeah, my phone. Here, I get it for you. statute that you need to identify yourself for is you hit the building. Is that the law? Yes. Is that a statute? South or is Dakota that law? State codified law. Is a statute. It's not law. It says codified law. In what sovereign writ that law? Huh? What sovereign writ that law? State of South Dakota. Law? State of South Dakota is not sovereign. I know. It's a state. It's where you're at. No. I'm in a state of bliss. I'm in a state of being. Okay. I'm in a natural state. All right. So. I am not in the state of South Dakota. I am on right. the you can land. You can that explain that to call. the judge. All right. Says the guy stood there on the land in a pair of handcuffs, about to take a ride to jail. And you missed one of the most important states, that being the state of delusion you must be in to think you're going to be able to convince a cop or a judge that statutes and codes aren't law. I don't need to hear you explain that to the judge. Well, you guys are going to release me and stop wasting my time, or I'm going to charge you for my time. Yep, you tried that once already. You didn't work so well, did it? Oh, you think I tried that? Yes, because I know who you are. Oh, okay. I almost felt second-hand embarrassment for him then. Almost. But the fact that this guy is threatening the police with his million dollar fee schedule when he knows it doesn't work, yet still wheels it out to intimidate should tell you everything you need to know about what sort of person this is. Let's see so how that goes. You can identify yourself. Are you guys going to keep running your extortion racket? Because I've worked out with that man that I will compensate really? any and all damages. And I don't need no third-party interlopers interfering into my affairs. Because he said you didn't identify yourself. I identified myself to him. Not according to him. Okay. Then he can go to court and we'll have this conversation in court. But I have nothing to do with you two clowns. Yep. You're going to get a citation for leaving the scene of an accident. Oh, I left while I was here the whole time? Did you? What was I did not you go the in the time? Did you go in the building and tell him that you hit his building? I didn't know I hit the building, sir. Okay. So now we're come out here and told you that you did. Yeah, actually, someone else came in there and told me that I, I did. And then I came, recorded it. And then I came running right out as soon as I was told that I hit someone's building. And I came out to see what was going on. And I told the man, hey, if it was me, I'm sorry. I fucked up. I will gladly fix it. What is it going to cost? I can fix it myself. Or if you want to hire your guy to fix it, that's fine. I have no problem compensating damages of anything I've done wrong. I do have a problem with road pirates sitting here trying to extort me and waste my time. Says the guy wasting everyone's time by spouting pseudo law and refusing to identify. Dude, I think it's obvious to everyone that the alleged victim who you go on to mock doesn't trust a word you say, so much so that he had to call the police. If the situation was how you described, then you wouldn't be in this situation. I'd love to be left alone to go about You're my day. You're going to be left alone as soon as we get done with the crash report. Then why are you wasting my time? I'm not wasting your time. You're wasting my time because you won't give us your name so we can write it in the report and get this over with and get you on your way. My name is none of your fucking business. It is. It needs to go in the accident report. It needs to be given to the victim. Okay, I'll go talk to the victim. 
Show Me the Victim is the battle cry of every sovereign citizen, used on every traffic stop and during every court appearance, yet when they actually create what they themselves define a victim, this is how they respond, proving, as if we needed to, that they do not give a damn about the law. It's about what they can get away with, and he knows it. And that's why when guys like this get backed into a corner, they resort to dishonesty and personal attacks. No, you think only government can solve problems. Your daddy didn't teach you right. You didn't know that. Your daddy never taught you that two men. You know why? Because he's each fucking other. dead. Yeah. Don't ever talk and about my dad. And while he was here, he didn't teach you right, did he? He no, didn't teach you that another I was man. One. He didn't teach you that another man can go talk to another man and okay. solve his problems. You don't need government Did intervention. Did I learn that when I was one years old? I don't know. Exactly. But it's brought you to what you are today. No, it isn't. Really. Continue with him with his investigation, or you can go to jail. We don't really. It's My not man up is a good us. citizen. Last chance. Last opportunity. What are you doing, man? Why are you being so rough with me? Oh, you're being so. Why are you throwing me? I'll get in the car. Why don't you fucking relax? Or, no, you just got to be a tough guy because you got me in handcuffs. You got that uniform on. The state gave you some title. You think you're king. I know. But why don't you calm the fuck down? So now we learn that the truck's registration has been expired since 2022, but according to what he told the alleged victim, the driver only recently purchased the vehicle, so the title might not be in his name yet, but I'm not sure how all that works in South Dakota. But it doesn't look good, does it? And it might be the reason why he started to get so worried when he learned the police had been called. Right, so I think that's where we'll end this one. Uh, the right to jail is uneventful and ends before he gets booked into jail. No info on the outcome, but at least we now know what to expect if we ever get into an accident with a sovereign citizen, especially if that person needs to be chased down, offers to repair any damage, or they are vague when it comes to swapping important details. Trust your instinct like this alleged victim did, because this guy doesn't see anyone other than himself as a victim. Right, thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video then please leave me a like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you also to my channel members and patrons for your continued support. I really appreciate it. Right, take care all and I will catch up with you in the next video.